Hello, and thanks for joining us at Data Tech Studios. Today we have a very special guest who's here to take us through a quick walk on the dark side of the World Wide Web. Senior Security Engineer for Dell Sonic Wall, Rob Krug. Rob, thanks for joining us today. Thank you, sir. It seems you can't turn on the TV or pull up your favorite news site without hearing about another data breach or catastrophic cybercrime. What's worse, the attacks that we hear about actually represent only a small fraction of cyber crimes committed against business organizations because A, for the most part, only the high profile attacks on major corporations like Target, Sony, or JP Morgan make national news, and B, the vast majority of these crimes are kept under wraps because the companies that are victimized don't want their customers or the general public to know they occurred. The reality is that the estimated annual cost stemming from cyber attacks is in the neighborhood of $100 billion. Contrary to popular belief, all of that money isn't coming from the high profile breaches that we hear about in the news. It's coming from small to medium sized businesses as well as millions of individual users that are victimized every day. But how? How exactly do cyber criminals infiltrate corporate networks? There's no one answer that can address that question, but Rob's here to show us just a few real world scenarios that happen every day, every minute, at companies of every shape and size throughout the world. Now, I've had an opportunity to, to see Rob in action no, a number of times, and believe me when I say that his presentations are eye-opening to say the least. With that, Rob, I'm going to pass it over to you. Thank you, sir. So, the breaches happen all the time, which you covered very succinctly. Now, as far as how they occur, again, it's a multitude of different attacks. Uh, a couple of them is the fish, right? The, the, very self-explanatory. It's a wide net that casts over a very broad audience. I mean, after all, how many of you have actually won the uh, African lottery? Right. Uh, another one is the big brother to the fish. It's a spear fish. It's more targeted. It has you in mind as an individual. So they may stake out your online profiles, your social media, your online presence, maybe uh, your alumni records from your college uh, campus newsletter. Sure. Then they impersonate something specific to you and hit you with that targeted information. You fall victim to that particular attack. Others, of course, social engineering. The legacy of security of black hat hackers the world over. Uh, the first chapter in every online guide to becoming a hacker, the first chapter is always social engineering. Now, from what I understand, social engineering on social media is becoming uh, near epidemic, in part because of just there's so many users, somewhere in the neighborhood of 1.6 billion, and also the degree of trust that comes from a site like, say, Facebook, where people are more likely to share personal information. The last stat that I saw showed, I think it was 600,000 breaches a day or uh, attacks a day on Facebook users. I oh, mean, is is that accurate? Would you, would you say that's a huge problem? Absolutely. And it comes into some very uh, simple ways people can take advantage of protection that's in the systems already that they're not taking advantage of today. Right. Listing your favorite colors, listing your favorite pets' names, uh, your date of birth, all this information is leveraged in a social engineering attack against a bank pretending to be a customer or a individual where the hacker is pretending to be the bank and they now have your information and say that there's someone they're not in order to trick you into giving over your finances or your personal information to the next level to the attacker. Sure, very sophisticated too. I mean, you see, you see some of these attacks. I mean, you, a, a normal user wouldn't know the difference between that and, and an actual correspondence from a bank. Very true, very true. Right, and I recently wrote a piece for uh, datatech.com about LinkedIn. LinkedIn is becoming more yep. and more dangerous because People are more apt to, to give out their personal information on LinkedIn, right. especially a job seeker. If somebody contacts them for a potential uh, employment, it's natural that they're gonna, they're, they will be more apt to give out their personal information, and it's just it's becoming a serious, serious problem. And the reverse is also true. If you're a job uh, hunter and you're looking for someone, uh, you're trying to fill a position, and you, someone emails you their resume in a zip file. Absolutely. May not be the resume, may be some malware. Exactly. Yeah, very good point there. The other scenarios that are very common are spyware. It's very self-explanatory. It's people uh, embedding traffic and malicious uh, applications to sensitive, uh, steal your sensitive data. But what most people don't do in their networks today is scan that outbound traffic. Spyware is already on the network. It's sending out, but it's using it as legitimate uh, applications, not malicious content. 
the another uh, prime, bre uh, prime breach that happens today is the water hole attack. The water hole attack sounds kind of mystical, but it's basically a play on words where a predator stakes out a water hole and waits for its prey to come to it. Same thing happens. They maliciously attack a website, maybe a harmless ad site. You go to a legitimate website, the ad propagates to your browser. Mm -hmm. It's no longer an ad, it's a malware, or some exploit with a pop-up message saying you've been breached and call an 800 number, where you're actually calling a hacker that's going to take control of your PC and maliciously attack you or steal your data or force ransomware or any level of, uh, in between to compromise your integrity. Right. So no, definitely one of the ways to look for having security solutions that can protect against those without letting users go to malicious sites in the first place, very, very powerful. Very powerful. And I don't, I don't think the average user realizes how common the, these attacks are. I mean, every day, every day. I mean, I see it alone just in my own email. I know what to look for, thankfully. But a lot of really scary stuff there, Rob, and great information for business managers as well as individual users. The threat landscape right now can obviously be pretty terrifying, but the reason we get this information out there isn't to convince business owners to throw in the towel, quite the opposite. There are very specific steps that can be taken by organizations today to protect against the seemingly inevitable network breach. And contrary to what you may think, it's not all about spending a ton of money on a bunch of brand new hardware every year to keep up with the latest threats. DataTech and Dell SonicWall invite you to join us at our upcoming security summit to learn exactly how these dangerous exploits are leveraged by the bad guys, as well as what else is going bump on the net, and most importantly, how you can protect your company from being victimized. Thank you for watching, and Rob and I hope to meet you in person very soon. We'll see you then. We're proud to announce that DataTech was recently named as a top 10 managed security provider in the industry, as well as a Dell Partner of the Year. Dell SonicWall is a worldwide leader in advanced network security, secure remote access, and data protection. Join us at our upcoming Cybersecurity Summit, where we will explore the latest in cybersecurity risks, attack vulnerabilities, the threat landscape, and most importantly, what you can do today to prevent the breach of tomorrow. How important is your data to your business?